prospect of a Greek default has shaken markets all around the world. And banking stocks in Europe, while well, they are among the worst hit, they've fallen by a fifth since February. Investors are increasingly worried about the effect a default would have on the banking system, given the exposure that many lenders have to Greek sovereign debt. Well, my next guest is a senior member of Fitch's financial institutions ratings team. James Longston is in Singapore to speak at the agency's annual global banking conference where he's going to discuss the status of global banking focusing on Europe. James, thanks very much for being with us. Uh, at this same Singapore conference where you're speaking, one of your colleagues, uh, Andrew Col Colhoun, who has, uh, who's the head of Asia Pacific Sovereign Ratings, he has said that Fitch would regard a voluntary rollover of Greek debt as a default. Can you confirm that for us? Well, I, I'm not one of our sovereign analytical teams, but we, we have certainly said under certain circumstances um, we can call uh, a, a default. It doesn't have to be a non-payment of debt. It can be some sort of coercive exchange on debt or something that we consider coercive can uh, at Fitch be considered a default under our criteria, yes. And but only under certain circumstances. And those circumstances would be would be what? Well, again, I'm not the sovereign yeah. analyst on this, so primarily I'm focused on the banking. All right. Well, let's group, talk but, about the um, impact. It's whatever it is that. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the impact on the banks then. If it were to be classified as a default, what does that mean for the European banking system? Well, I suppose the short answer is it, it doesn't need to mean that it has to lead to some sort of cataclysmic, cataclysmic spiral. That just simply isn't true. Because um, when you, while, while certainly the major European banks, some of them, you know, some of the banking systems you know, have what on the face of it look like large numbers. For example, the French banks have in the region of 10, 11 billion of sovereign debt exposure to Greece. You know, in the scheme of it, in the scheme of things, that isn't a particularly large number relative to the size of the very large banks that, that own it. So approximately, for example, the, the French bank holdings is only equivalent to maybe four or five percentage points of their but capital. James, so on that basis, it doesn't need to be, um, it doesn't need to be, and, and it just isn't a fundamental sort of solvency risk. It's what happens next. You right, know, that, it, that's the risk is it, at the end the of the question, day. It's the contagion. And would, would there be contagion, even if the banks could absorb the Greek losses? Would the market then panic and think, well, if Greece can default, then you know Ireland and they can ask for for better terms as well on their debt? Okay, now that's a good question. It doesn't have to be the scenario that there has to be some sort of full-scale risk aversion in the sort of ilk that was the case you know, in the in the sub in the in the postscript to, to Lehman Brothers defaulting, for example. That is certainly one scenario. There would certainly be some fallout, um, but you've got to take this in the context that the banks are considerably better capitalised than they were pre-Lehman. They're considerably more liquid than they were pre-Lehman. So, should they be able to contain? the contagion that does happen, there would be some fallout for sure, to a, a sort of relatively moderate level, relatively short-lived level, there's no particular you know, reason to think that this is a sort of fundamental issue that under undermines the European banking system. That just simply isn't true. The numbers of exposure, whether it be to Greek sovereign debt, to Irish sovereign debt, really the minimum level of exposure to Irish sovereign debt and to Portuguese sovereign debt, little exposure, likewise to the banks in these countries. So. It's really what the market make of it. You know, at the end of the day, if there is some sort of concerted um, sense that the policyholders have a grip of the situation and they can undermine, underline the situation, put a floor under it and stop it spreading to Spain, Italy, for example, then certainly it ought to be containable for the large banks. All right, James, I want to ask you about an article that we had in the Sunday Telegraph over here reporting that a credit crunch may actually have already begun. Something uh, reported about Barclays, Standard Chartered, oh, other UK banks actually reducing unsecured lending to Eurozone banks, a sort of credit crunch in the making. Is this a big worry? It can, you know, again, this is the sort of the same, the same, I guess there's another way of saying the same thing. You know, banks will automatically and counterparties will automatically react to any bad news. Now, it's the, the question is how long and how deep that bad news is. You know, if there is a long protracted risk aversion, everybody pulling out of bank risk, then clearly that, that is a concern. It has to be a concern. Um, but if this is some sort of temporary thing, then banks have built up sufficient amount, you know, large amounts of capital, much, much more liquidity the banks have. That's 
really important relative to pre uh, Lehman Brothers. So relatively short term gyrations, if you like, uh, uh, ought to be very absorbable and by James, the large banks. It's really the depth and length. What about the CDS market? If you have a default without a default, then it doesn't get triggered, it doesn't get kicked in, and then that means yeah. that maybe it's pointless to have that CDS insurance. What's it, it, your concern here? It certainly here? is. Well, again, you know, that, that's the issue, uh, for example, with Greece. You're saying, do you get naked exposure effectively? What you, where you thought you had brought protection, you're not protected. Again, our view is that at the moment, that's not going to make a whole heap of difference, to be honest. All right. James Longston of Fitch Ratings. He's co-head of EMEA Financial Institutions. Thanks very much for helping us Thank shed you. light on this Greek debt crisis. All right.